In this video, I will walk you through free response question number six from AP Calculus Practice Exam 1. This problem is about position, velocity, and acceleration. If you haven't seen free response questions number one through five yet, you should probably watch those first. Either click the link that appears in the upper right hand corner or find the link in the description. On the interval from zero to 12, a particle moves along the x-axis. The velocity of the particle at time t is given by v of t equals cosine of pi over 6 t. The particle is at position x equals negative 2 at time t equals 0. Part A. On the interval from 0 to 12, when is the particle moving to the left? Moving to the left means that velocity will be negative, so our strategy will be to make a sign chart of velocity and see where velocity is negative and positive. To make a sign chart, we first must find the values of t where velocity is equal to zero. So let's set cosine of pi over six t equal to zero and solve. We ask ourselves, where does cosine equal zero? On the unit circle, cosine is an x value, which will equal zero here and here. As we travel around the unit circle counterclockwise, at this position, we are at pi over 2. As we continue around to this position, it is 3 pi over 2. We usually stop here because we are used to solving for values between 0 and 2 pi, and this would be it. However, we are looking for values of t between 0 and 12. I can't be sure whether or not another solution would lead to a value of t that is between 0 and 12, or if I would be outside of the interval. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to keep going around the unit circle and back up to here to find an additional value. An additional solution right here would now be 5 pi over 2. So this is 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. In order to solve for t, I'm going to start by multiplying both sides of the equation by 6. So I'm going to multiply by 6 here, 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 and here. So now I have pi times t is equal to 6 pi over 2 simplifies down to 3 pi. This is 18 pi over 2, or 9 pi. And this is 30 pi over 2, which is 15 pi. To get t by itself, let's divide everything by pi, which will leave us with t is equal to 3, 9, or 15. It turns out that we didn't need this extra value because it falls outside of the interval between 0 and 12. But notice that we couldn't be sure unless we tried. So now we can make the sign chart using the values of t at which the velocity is equal to zero, as well as the endpoints. Now we need to decide whether the velocity is positive or negative in each interval. In the first interval, let's find the velocity at t equals two. So we have cosine of pi over six times two, but this simplifies down to the cosine of pi over three, which has a value of one half. This is positive. For the next interval, let's find the velocity at t equals 6. So we have cosine of pi over 6 times 6, which simplifies down to the cosine of pi. This has a value of negative 1. So the velocity is negative in this interval. In the last interval, let's find the velocity at t equals 10. So we have this, but this simplifies down to the cosine of 5 pi over 3. The reference angle here is pi over 3, so I know the cosine will either be positive 1 half or negative 1 half, but 5 pi over 3 is in the fourth quadrant. Cosine, which is an x value, is positive in the fourth quadrant, so the velocity is positive in this interval. So the particle is moving left on the interval from 3 to 9 because velocity is negative. Part B. Write, but do not evaluate, an integral expression that gives the total distance traveled by the particle from time t equals 0 to time t equals 6. 
Here is the formula for total distance traveled from A to B, which I hope you have memorized. Notice the absolute value. So the total distance traveled by the particle from time t equals 0 to t equals 6 will be the integral from 0 to 6 of the absolute value of cosine pi over 6t dt. Or, since v of t was defined for us in the setup of the problem, you could just write your answer like this. Part C. Find the acceleration of the particle at time t. Is the speed of the particle increasing, decreasing, or neither at time t equals 4? Explain your reasoning. The acceleration function will equal the derivative of the velocity function. To find the derivative of cosine pi over 6t, we need to use the chain rule. So the derivative of the outer function, which is cosine, is negative sine. But then we do have this inner function, pi over 6t. And according to the chain rule, we must now multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is pi over 6. Putting the pi over 6 in the front, we have a of t equals negative pi over 6 sine pi over 6t. So that's the answer to the first part. But how do we determine if the speed of the particle is increasing, decreasing, or neither at t equals 4? Speed is increasing when velocity and acceleration have the same sign. Speed is decreasing when velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. So our strategy is, let's find the velocity and acceleration at time t equals 4 and see how the signs compare. V at 4 will equal cosine of pi over 6 times 4. This simplifies down to the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Since the reference angle is pi over 3, I know the cosine will be either positive 1 half or negative 1 half. Since 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant, I know that the cosine will be negative. Acceleration at 4 will equal negative pi over 6 times sine pi over 6 times 4. In other words, negative pi over 6 times the sine of 2 pi over 3. Since the reference angle is pi over 3, I know that the sine will either be positive radical 3 over 2 or negative radical 3 over 2. 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant where sine is positive. So we have a at 4 is equal to negative pi over 6 times radical 3 over 2. So the acceleration at time t equals 4 is negative pi radical 3 over 12. Notice that the velocity and acceleration have the same sign. They're both negative. That tells us that the speed is increasing at t equals 4. In summary, the speed of the particle is increasing at t equals 4 because velocity and acceleration are both negative. Part D. Find the position of the particle at time t equals 4. The first fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that the integral of f prime from a to b is equal to the change in f from a to b. Rewriting in terms of position, velocity, and acceleration, we have the integral of velocity from a to b will equal the change in position from a to b. Common sense tells you that the end position at time b should equal the start position at time a plus the change in position from a to b. The end position is the position that we are looking for, the position at time t equals 4. Since the particle is traveling along the x-axis, let's call it x at 4. What about the start position? In the setup of the problem, we are told that the particle is at position x equals negative 2 at time t equals 0. Let's use this as the start position. So we have an expression for the end position. That's x at 4. We have an expression for the start position. That's x at 0. We just need an expression for the change in position. But remember, the change in position from a to b is the integral of velocity from a to b. In other words, the change in position from 0 to 4 should equal the integral of velocity from 0 to 4. Let's fill in a few things. We know that the position at t equals 0 
is negative 2. So x at 0 is negative 2. We know that velocity is given by cosine of pi over 6t. So now we have this. It looks like we just need to evaluate the definite integral of cosine pi over 6t from 0 to 4. We can find the antiderivative of cosine pi over 6t using mental u substitution. Imagine that u is equal to pi over 6t. In that case, u prime will simply equal pi over 6. We normally wouldn't even write this down. This is all in your head. So think of this as the cosine of u. And the antiderivative of cosine u is sine u. However, when we do the u substitution, we replace dt with du over u prime. When we divide by pi over 6, it's the same thing as multiplying by 6 over pi. So we have to put a 6 over pi out in the front. Instead of putting a plus c on the end, let's put a vertical line and apply the limits of integration from 0 to 4. This means we need to find the value of this expression at 4 and subtract the value at 0. So here is the value at 4 minus the value at 0. But pi over 6 times 4 simplifies down to 2 pi over 3. And of course, pi over 6 times 0 is just 0. The sine of 2 pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. And sine of 0 is 0. So now we have this. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the position of the particle at time t equals 4 is negative 2 plus 3 radical 3 over pi. 